This is my very special account, an account which I have not pulled on either the limited or standard banner since day one of the game. However, that is all about to change because if I am not able to beat the hardest content in Honkai Star Rail, by the time that I reach 300 standard pulls, I will be unlocking the second gear and pulling all 300. And with the new endgame here, Apocalyptic Shadow, comes another challenge to test the limits of this account. Also, what are your guys' thoughts on Apocalyptic Shadow? Is it good? Is it creating too much power creep or do you think it's just another mode to sell the current character on the banner similar to an existing one right now i'm looking at you pure fiction but yeah what are your thoughts and with the highly anticipated pairing of sway yi and harmony mc will they be able to carry us to victory or will hsr endgame prove to be too difficult without pulling see initially i was pretty optimistic about beating apocalyptic shadow and it didn't seem too difficult at first as i was able to auto battle through both the first and the second difficulty however However, the jump from the second difficulty to the third was so insanely absurd that it actually affected my sanity. For reference, Kokolia in difficulty 1 has 75,000 HP, in difficulty 2 she has 275,000 HP, but in difficulty 3 she jumps to an astounding 1 million HP. That's a bigger power spike than if Tectone had hair. But I soon realized that there were a few major issues and after a countless number of attempts where my teams just kept on wiping, I started to question everything. Was it because I have skill issues? Was it because I was using 4 piece eagle on my entire team? Was it because I rejected Firefly? What was I doing wrong? How was I supposed to beat this and get my Sway Yi? But then I discovered something that would change everything. My stupidity. Because as it turns out, the free Sway Yi only requires us to beat the second difficulty and not the third. So we ended up claiming Sway Yi and building her out. And when I say building her out, it was mainly just stealing QQ's quantum pieces, except for this break percent rope that I had saved up for Sway Yi. That works, that works. And we're currently sitting at 44% crit rate, 137% crit damage, and 2,400 attack about, right? Come on. Okay, crit rate. This looks promising. Speed, crit rate, crit damage. We got three out of four good stats here. Come on crit rate again i'll take that i'll take that let's keep it going let's keep it rolling crit rate oh ask and you shall receive that's a that's a pretty decent roll too there's no way this hits crit rate again okay speed <laughs> that's a perfect break piece oh wow and we're currently sitting at 139 speed 52 percent crit rate and 137 percent crit damage 2400 attack and 130 percent break effect i'll take that i'll take that any day of the week our sway yi is looking mighty fine mighty fine i'll say that now with our sway yi's build completed will she be enough and she's dead okay yeah so the answer is no even with our four piece eagle links it wasn't enough to keep the team alive in the first phase and the other big issue is kokolia's ability to attack multiple times and freeze all of our allies however one key strategy that made a huge difference was this here see when kokolia has two big statues on the field each one of those statues will target an ally and every time kokolia takes her turn she will send a follow-up attack onto the locked on target with a high chance to freeze or imprison them. So the plan is simple. If we wanted to reduce the number of attacks and damage that Kokolia can deal, then we'll have to at least weakness break the statues early on, just right before she takes her second turn. Furthermore, it felt like the damage was extremely lacking as well, so I had to change up a few things. In particular, we moved Harmony MC from the second half to the first half with Sway Yi. And oh boy, it made a huge difference, as the damage numbers were off the roof. What? I honestly don't think I've ever hit that much damage on a single character on this account. That's absurd. Sway Yi, Harmony MC, the combo is just too good. It's too insane. There we go. There we go. Phase 1 completed. However, even with Phase 1 easily defeated, we still faced eminent defeat as Kokolia just does way too much damage in her second phase. But not only that, we were definitely way behind on the damage check since our allies weren't able to break her fast enough. Essentially, it came down to basically needing more damage. I basically needed a fourth DPS. And so my hands were tied. It was time. It was time to make the hard decision. See, originally, I wanted to say 
gave the four star selector to see if I wanted Luka more or Gallagher. This was more particularly for MOC, but to be honest, having a healer that can also act as a pseudo fourth DPS on a break team with Harmony MC is just too good to pass up. And so after beating up the 40 year old mommies and aunties in Candy Crush, we went ahead and got Gallagher. However, this isn't any ordinary Gallagher. As you guys will see, I had a secret build ready for him. One that you guys would have never expected. That's right, partner. It's the four piece Eagle Gallagher. No, no, I'm, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Don't do that. It's, it's definitely 100% useless. But instead, it was this. I'm going to try it out. I don't care. We're going we're gonna to experiment here. We have a ton of XP. We have a ton of resources. Six speed. That's pretty damn good. That's pretty damn good. Yep. The four piece quantum set as this will allow our boy Gallagher to ignore 20% of the enemy's defense when we deal super break damage with him. So now that the damage is there, the question still remains. Will we be able to survive? And so this happened. All right. This should be the end of the first phase here. Yeah. Damn, that thigh gap is insane. Okay, we'll ultimate here with Gallagher and then we'll break the statue. Oh, it's almost done. Oh, wow. I could actually one shot that thing. Okay, that's not looking good for us. Okay, we'll ultimate here with Sui Yi and we'll ultimate Kokolia because Sui Yi can uh, go through any type of weakness with her ultimate. We'll focus the statue here and break it, then ultimate with Gallagher into a normal attack. And then we'll normal attack Kolia here. Ah, uh, oh, dude, I don't think we have enough toughness break to break it before Kolia goes. Um, that's fine. We'll break the statue here. That's going to apply weakness break to Kokolia for the quantum weakness. We're just going to have to tank this here and hopefully we don't die. Pretty sure we should be okay. Alrighty, not bad, not bad. Oh. Never mind. <laughs> I totally forgot about her follow up attacks. That's fine. We'll heal with Gallagher here and then we'll ultimate right away. This should allow us to break Kokolia immediately. Break Kokolia. Perfect. And that's going to give us all our ultimates again. Okay. Sway Yi. Let's go. Bang, baby. Oh, 231k. All right. I'll take that. And we'll finish off Kokolia with Harmony TB. Nice, nice. Overall, in our first attempt, we were able to completely dismantle Kokolia. And with 3,400 points in the bag, we only needed 3,200 more. But little did I know, without Harmony TB, the damage would drop off significantly. Since this reset heavily favors break teams, I wonder why. As for the Argenti side, the goal now is to get 3,200. But there were a few big issues. See, initially, I ran a Super Sushang build with Harmony TB and and Gwenaifen. This team got the exact score that we needed of 3200. However, as you guys saw, I had to move Harmony TB to Kokolia's side. Therefore, the score did not count. And we also had to build a new team. But who? Who then will be a viable option for the second half? And so the only non-break option that is serviceable is of course our favorite doctor. No, no, not that one. Not Dr. Doodiddy, okay? Yes, Dr. Ratio. And so this was the team that I formed. Dr. Ratio, Gwenaifen, Pella, and Natalia. Tasha. Lil Gwynny and Pella are great as they both provide a separate debuff for Dr. Ratio's follow-up attack as well as providing a separate damage modifier, the vulnerability debuff and defense shred. So the strategy was simple. At the start, Argenti will summon four of his statues like usual and in order for us to break Argenti, we'll need to defeat at least one of these statues. Otherwise, Argenti will have toughness immunity. However, every time Argenti takes his turn, he'll summon more statues and therefore he'll become immune once again. So the plan is simple. Just keep the statues low enough and wait until after he takes his turn to finish them off. Therefore, giving us a window where we can break Argenti and deal as much damage as possible in his weakness broken state. If we cannot finish off Argenti after breaking him, he'll regain his toughness and by then it'll be impossible to meet the DPS check. So it was critical and crucial that we have enough damage after we break Argenti in order to finish him off. That was the ultimate strategy for phase one, but phase two is a whole different issue because at the start of the second phase, Argenti will summon four statues and when each statue takes its turn, it will sacrifice itself to boost the damage of his giant AoE attack. Therefore, in order to survive, I needed to make sure to defeat at least one of the statues before they take their turn. Furthermore, for every statue that we defeat, we get 5% damage boost to our entire team, which is a very nice side bonus, especially for Dr. Ratio. And with that, we were able to survive Argenti's one shot. But the real issue comes right after, as he then summons four more statues to his 
side that will taunt all of our allies, thereby not allowing us to focus our Genti to deal the necessary toughness damage, but instead making us waste our turns to defeat the statues, which ultimately causes us to get a lower score. However, there is a counter to this that can change everything. See, a taunt is a debuff, meaning that it can be removed from our allies with a cleanse. However, Natasha can only remove one debuff at a time with her skill. So how will we be able to get an AoE cleanse for all of our allies? Yep, it is Lynx. That is our answer. So all I had to do was replace Natasha with Lynx and save her ultimate for this very moment here to cleanse our entire team. And then this happened. Holy moly, I almost died! Ah, I cleansed early! Oh my god, I, I panicked! No! I'm so mad. I cleansed early because I panicked because I saw Dr. Ratio at 70 HP. We have 100 action value to go through. We cannot go a low 1200. Otherwise, it's doom. This is not looking good for us. Oh no. Skill. No, dude. Ah, oh, dude. This is so hard, man. I... 6,500. No, we need 6,600. Oh, dude, this is so hard. This is so hard. But did I give up? Oh, hell no. Nah. We hitting them cleanses. Easy. She is Lynx. She don't miss these. 200 score. We might be able to do it here. Skill here with Pella. Skill here with Gunaipin. Skill with Dr. Ratio again. We have 150 action value left for 35% of its HP. Come on. Skill for maximum damage. Crit. Nice. That's huge for us. We have 24 action value here. Come on. Can we do anything else? No, I think that's it. That's the only play we have here. Please. This has to be it. Oh, the energy. We get enough energy. What? Oh, yes. Come on, Lynx. Dang, that is it. That is it. That is our moment of victory. Oh, it's over. I'm just happy that it's over. I'm just, I'm just relieved. And there we go. 295 standard warps, 145 special warps, and 128,780 stellar jades. Time is running out. The final boss is waiting for us. With Swayze and Gallagher on our team, will we be able to save this account? Subscribe and stay tuned to find out.